Alpha Centauri is the closest star system to ours, and one of the most critical targets in the search for habitable planets. Until now, we knew very little about the possible worlds in this star system. But that is about to change thanks to the Ptolemy Space Telescope. What will this telescope do and when will it be launched into space? Keep watching to find out. Why Alpha Centauri? In this channel, we have talked many times about this system. Its importance lies mainly in that it is the closest star system to the Sun, and therefore the most promising place to search for habitable planets like Earth. It's located at a distance of approximately 4.37 light years. It comprises three central stars, Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B, and Proxima Centauri. Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B are stars similar to the Sun and form a binary system orbiting each other around a common center of mass. These stars are slightly larger and more massive than our Sun. Alpha Centauri A is the largest and most luminous of the three while Alpha Centauri B is slightly smaller and dimmer. Both stars are similar in age to our Sun and are estimated to be around 4.85 and 6.17 billion years old, respectively. Regarding the possibility of habitable planets in the Alpha Centauri system, an exoplanet in orbit around Proxima Centauri has been discovered named Proxima B. Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf star and it is the closest of the three to the Sun. In addition, the exoplanet Proxima b is known to be in the habitable zone of its star, which means that liquid water could exist on its surface, which is considered a key factor for life as we know it. However, the star is an active red dwarf and regularly emits bursts of solar radiation, which could have implications for the habitability of the planet. For years, astronomers have carried out studies and simulations to determine if there are more planets in the Alpha Centauri system especially in the habitable zones around Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B. Some of these studies suggest the possibility of rocky planets in orbit around these stars, although no discovery has been confirmed. Given Alpha Centauri's proximity to our solar system, it has aroused great interest in the scientific community and the possibility of sending space missions in the future to explore this star system further. The development of technology such as solar sails and interstellar probes could allow us to get closer and study Alpha Centauri and its possible habitable planets more closely. However, these technologies are still too far out of reach, so currently the only thing we can do is to observe it with the most powerful telescopes of humanity. Ptolemy Mission Until now, everything we know about the Alpha Centauri star system is the result of research that has been carried out thanks to data and observations by telescopes and radio telescopes around the world in conjunction with space telescopes. Until now, a space mission with the priority objective of studying the Alpha Centauri system had never been seriously announced. However, that is about to change thanks to the Ptolemy mission. Ptolemy is the acronym of Telescope for Orbit Locus Interferometric Monitoring of our astronomical neighborhood. As its name indicates, this space telescope will have the mission of studying the closest stars to Earth, placing enormous emphasis on the study of the Alpha Centauri system. This makes it the first mission in history that will have as a priority objective to study the closest star system to ours. With what they expect to achieve, great discoveries to decipher which planets could be found in the surroundings of the stars that make up the Alpha Centauri system. In addition to Alpha Centauri, Ptolemy will have the objective of studying in depth all the stars that are less than 10 light years from Mars. So, although its scope will be limited, it will carry potent observation instruments that will allow it to see these regions as no other telescope has done before. In addition to its English acronym, the name Ptolemy comes from the Arabic name for Alpha Centauri. The spacecraft itself is a small, custom designed space telescope. You can make excellent measurements of the two stars to detect any planet around Alpha Centauri. Initially, the Ptolemy mission would be a project financed by NASA, but thanks to a fundraising campaign in 2021, the project obtained $500,000 from the Australian government. And in March of 2023, the University of Sydney said it would join the Ptolemy project by providing researchers and investment. 
In the same year, a Bulgarian aerospace manufacturer called Endurosat declared it would provide satellite technology, and breakthrough company initiatives led by Israeli businessman Yuri Milner stated that it will also back the mission. Peter Todhill, an astrophysical imaging expert from the University of Sydney in Australia, will lead the mission. Thanks to all these contributions from visionaries who believe we could find treasures in these stars, the Ptolemy mission will be possible. The project is currently in phase two of the program, which consists of designing and building the telescope and integrating it with the spacecraft. Before moving on, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can improve them for you, the viewer. Plus, don't forget to subscribe to our channel by making sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily videos. Small but mighty, the Ptolemy Space Telescope will not be the most powerful in history. It will not even be the biggest. Compared to the most modern satellites, it will be small but mighty. The Ptolemy Telescope must be small enough to fit a limited volume on a primary satellite. The Ptolemy Telescope won't be big since it won't look that far into the universe and will only look at the neighborhood around our solar system. Saving space by not carrying such a large lens will allow it to carry more complex observation instruments with which you can observe areas close to stars, especially those where there could be exoplanets. To achieve this feat, the team is developing a small, custom-designed space telescope capable of making excellent measurements that must fit within a limited volume of just 12 liters, while maintaining its thermal and mechanical stability with extreme precision using active systems. We are exceptionally proud to partner on this mission. The challenges are enormous and will push our engineering efforts to the extreme. The mission is the first scientific exploration effort of its kind and will help open the doors to low-cost astronomical missions. Rachel said, founder and CEO of Endurosat. Discovering exoplanets is a huge technological challenge, even for large space telescopes. For a mini satellite, it's incredibly daunting as it requires extreme precision to detect planets in other star systems. The satellite must be able to download payload data at more than 125 megabits per second, which will be essential to get all the data from long observing sessions. Endurosat Company will provide its technology, with which it is expected that the telescope can carry out constant and permanent monitoring in the vicinity of the stars that make up the Alpha Centauri system. So far, the main problem in looking for exoplanets in the closest stars to our solar system is that telescopes on Earth and in space are designed to observe a vast range of distances and sizes of objects in the universe, from small stars to vast clusters of galaxies. This prevents us from observing tiny bodies such as exoplanets, and even when we do observe them, they are almost always huge, the size of gas giants such as Neptune or Jupiter. To observe very small exoplanets the size of the Earth, you don't need a giant telescope. It is enough to have the suitable telescope for it, but until now, it had not been done since if a telescope is built that is specifically designed to observe nearby small exoplanets to Earth, this cannot be used for anything else. This implies a risk that very few space agencies are willing to take. That risk is that if this telescope fails to discover a single exoplanet, it will be wasted money since it will not have fulfilled the only objective for which it was made. It's difficult for a project like this to be financed by a space agency, which is why until now it has not been possible. However, the scientists in charge of this mission are optimistic. Modern satellite technology will allow us to explore our celestial backyard and perhaps lay the groundwork for future visionary missions spanning the interstellar voids to the Centauri system," said Ptolemy mission leader Professor Peter Tuthill from the University of Sydney. Professor Tuthill has an impressive track record of designing high-precision instrumentation for international astronomical projects such as the James Webb Telescope of NASA, which has been revolutionary in observational astronomy. He participated in the design of their Aperture Masking Interferometry Mode, better known as Near ISS, which offers a high resolution of spatial observation, ideal for the search for exoplanets. This experience will be helpful when designing observation equipment for the Ptolemy Project. Breakthrough initiatives funded by the Breakthrough Foundation established by Julia and Yuri Milner is a set of science and technology programs investigating the fundamental questions of life in the universe 
also including telescope time acquired at the park's radio telescope at CSIRO to search for any signatures that may be present around stars in the Milky Way. Any exoplanets we find close to Earth can be tracked with other instruments, providing excellent prospects for discovering and analyzing atmospheres, surface chemistry, or even fingerprints of a biosphere, the tentative signs of life. The Toleman Project scientists know the risk of creating a small telescope for a specific function. Still, they believe that if we find at least one habitable exoplanet with this mission, it will all be worth it. Around our solar system, many nearby stars could host habitable planets. So far, we still don't know if there are planets orbiting Alpha Centauri A and B, but we do know that the third member of the Alpha Centauri system, Proxima Centauri, has at least two exoplanets called Proxima Centauri A and B, about which we know very little. Before we move on to the last question, are we alone? Be sure to stay tuned afterwards if you haven't seen our earlier release on why colonize Alpha Centauri and Proxima Centauri. Alpha Centauri would be one of the very first destinations of a possible future interstellar trip manned with a human crew. Are we alone? Throughout humanity's history, every time we look at the night sky on starry nights, it's natural to wonder if perhaps we are the only beings that exist in the entire vast universe. We still do not have an answer to that question. We know that there are many stars and most of them have planets, but we have not found a single one where life arose as well as on Earth. Are we the only ones in the entire universe? Or is it that we have not searched enough? The constant search to know that we are not alone satisfies one of the most critical needs of humanity, and that need is curiosity. We are curious by nature. It is inevitable to ask ourselves questions and to think that we are not alone. We like to believe that even if we don't have any evidence for it, we are not alone in the universe. Searching for life in the closest stars to our solar system is the first step in answering this question. Whether we find something or not, the Toleman Telescope will give us the answers we seek. For the first time in all of history, the human race has the technology to look at other worlds and search for life outside our solar system. And this mission will test all the limits that our technology can reach. And you, do you think the Toleman mission will find a habitable exoplanet? Do you think we'll finally find out once and for all if we're alone in the universe? Let us know your opinion with your valuable comment. First of all, for its proximity, that of Alpha Centauri is the closest star system to ours, just 4.3 light years from the Sun. One light year is the distance traveled by light in a year in a vacuum, and is equivalent to about 10,000 billions of kilometers. This means that traveling at the speed of light, it would take us 4.3 years to reach Alpha Centauri. The Alpha Centauri system is a triple system consisting of two stars similar to the Sun in mass and size, quite close to each other, known as Alpha Centauri A and B, and a more distant and faint red dwarf star known as Alpha Centauri C or Proxima Centauri. The name Proxima from the Latin means closest, and in fact to be precise, Proxima Centauri is the closest star to the Sun, which is 4.22 light years away, and not Alpha Centauri. The brightness of Proxima is only 0.0008 times that of our Sun, while its mass is about one-tenth of the solar mass and its dimensions are smaller than that of Saturn. It is located approximately 15,000 astronomical units from components A and B. Another reason concerns the planets discovered around two of the three components of the Alpha Centauri system. We recall that to date, two planets in orbit around Proxima, known as Proxima Centauri b, and Proxima Centauri c are confirmed. Some time ago, the existence of a third planet around Proxima, Proxima Centauri d, and two planets orbiting Alpha Centauri b was hypothesized, but subsequent observations have not yet been able to confirm them with certainty. As for the two confirmed planets, Proxima Centauri b was discovered in 2016 by analyzing data obtained through the HARPS spectrograph, mounted on the European Southern Observatory 3.6 meter telescope in La Silla, Chile. Proxima Centauri b orbits the star in just over 11 days. A year on this planet lasts as little as a week and a half on Earth. 
The average distance of Proxima Centauri b from its star is equal to about 0.049 astronomical units, which is less than 5% of the average distance between Earth and the Sun. Its mass is equal to 1.7 times the Earth's mass and receives only 65% of the energy that the Earth receives from the Sun. Proxima Centauri c is a super-Earth, i.e. a rocky planet like ours but a bit bigger, about seven times more massive than Earth, which orbits around Proxima at an average distance of about 1.5 astronomical units, more or less the same distance between Mars and the Sun, taking just over five years. Its average temperature is about 39 Kelvin, equal to about minus 230 degrees Celsius. It was discovered by the group of researchers led by Italian astrophysicist Mario Damaso in April of 2019 by studying the small oscillations in radial velocities detected by the HARP spectrograph. During 2020, the existence of the planet was confirmed through observations from the Hubble Space Telescope. Due to the slight differences in brightness it presents as it travels through its orbit, it is believed that it may have a ring system. It is believed that only Proxima Centauri b is located within the habitability range of its star. Recall that the habitability belt is the area around a certain star where a planet can have liquid water on its surface and a surface temperature that is neither too low nor too high, making it potentially suitable for hosting life forms. And the search for extraterrestrial life is undoubtedly one of the reasons for colonizing the Proxima Centauri system of planets. Next-generation telescopes such as the European Extremely Large Telescope will be used to conduct an intensive study of Proxima b in the hope of finding life forms other than terrestrial ones. Proxima Centauri c, due to the great distance from its star and the very low temperatures, is probably outside the habitability belt of its star. Another reason for colonizing the Alpha Centauri system is represented by the longevity of red dwarf stars which is identified with the duration of the main sequence phase. The main sequence is a phase of stability in which the star, through the thermonuclear reactions that take place in the core, produces helium from the combustion of hydrogen. In the case of red dwarfs, having a mass much smaller than the solar one, the main sequence phase and therefore of stability would last longer than the entire age of the universe. And this happens because as red dwarfs have a small mass, the rate at which they burn hydrogen to produce helium is lower than for stars of greater mass. In comparison with what has happened on Earth, it is believed that life is more likely to develop on planets orbiting stars with a very long main sequence phase duration. On the other hand, however, there are some doubts that the planets orbiting the red dwarfs may actually be suitable for hosting life forms. The red dwarfs are in fact much more active stars than those similar to the Sun and can therefore produce very intense flares associated with a conspicuous emission of ultraviolet radiation and X-rays, which can be harmful to living organisms if absorbed in high doses. These high-energy radiations investing the surface of the planets near the red dwarfs could sterilize their surface, making them unsuitable for life. It would therefore be necessary to understand if any life forms could survive in the subsoil of these planets. Another reason why the planets around the red dwarfs may not be suitable for life is the probable synchronous rotation due to the tidal star-planet interactions, which would act for the planets closest to their star. This means that the planet takes the same time to make a rotation on themselves and a revolution around the star. This would imply that one planet would always show the same hemisphere to the star, while the other would always be in the dark. Furthermore, the colonization of the Alpha Centauri system would perhaps allow us to answer, citing Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the fundamental question about life, the universe, and everything. Are we alone? Are there habitable worlds in our galactic neighborhood? And then, after the moon, could we make the great leap to the stars? And surely the answer would not be 42, but a much more articulated answer depending on economic, political, technological, scientific reasons. And the desire to go beyond the moon is the basis of a proposal to NASA by John Culberson, a member of the House of Representatives for the state of Texas, to send a mission to Proxima Centauri by 2069. 
The date is not accidental, but it would fall in the centenary of the conquest of the moon. It must be remembered that scientists continue to discover exoplanets using powerful orbiting telescopes, but we physically have moved very little from the Earth. Only the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 missions launched in 1977 and containing a disk with the sounds of the Earth intended for any extraterrestrial listeners who might come across the probe in a distant future have recently crossed the boundaries of our solar system. For this purpose, one cannot fail to mention the breakthrough initiatives announced in July 2015 by the Russian tycoon Yuri Milner. It is a scientific program aimed at searching for signals coming from space and sent by any extraterrestrial civilizations. It is divided into three projects. Breakthrough Listen, whose idea is to obtain the spectrum of about a million stars in search of possible non-terrestrial signals of artificial origin, and Breakthrough Message, which will have as its purpose in case the Listen phase they are allowed to discover extraterrestrial civilizations to send them a message. The third project, Breakthrough Initiative, is perhaps the most interesting. Announced on April 12, 2016, it was born with the intention of developing a prototype of laser-powered light spacecraft called Starship, capable of traveling up to the Alpha Centauri star system at a speed between 15% and 20% of that of the light in the vacuum, thus taking 20 to 30 years to reach it and about four years to notify it to planet Earth. In addition to Yuri Milner, the project initially included Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg and late British astrophysicist Stephen Hawking. It is believed that at least 20 years are required for the realization of the project. The Starshot concept involves the launch of a mother ship that carries small spacecraft the size of a few centimeters to the outside of Earth's orbit. From here, a laser beam coming from the ground will accelerate the 4 by 4 meter sails connected to the microprobes up to 100 kilometers per second squared. Thanks to these probes, it will be possible to reach and visit the planet Proxima Centauri b in about 30 years and capture an image of high quality sufficient to fully understand the surface characteristics of the planet. A swarm of about 1,000 units is assumed to compensate for the losses caused by interstellar dust collisions while navigating to the planet of interest. In a recent detailed study, Astrophysicist Chai Tam Hong and his collaborators found that mitigating collisions with dust, hydrogen, and cosmic rays may not be as serious an engineering problem as one might think. In conclusion, using our current technology, a trip to Alpha Centauri for a probe with the same characteristics as the New Horizons, the probe that recently visited Pluto, Ultima Thule, and is now entering the Kuiper Belt, would take approximately 78,000 years. But projects like Breakthrough Starshot or similar would give a big boost to the development of new methods of space propulsion and new technologies for miniaturization of cameras and other electronic components. Because it is truly cool to travel to infinity and beyond, as Buzz Lightyear said in the Disney movie Toy Story. But it is equally cool to look for applications that are unthinkable today, useful for improving daily life.